Hello everybody, how are you boys doing today? We have another game of another best of three series in the ESL Major League, which just started into the second season. And our first game is going to be a best of three between WellMet and SK Gaming. WellMet, of course, with that lineup change, I talked about it in one of the last videos. They're extremely strong right now, probably the best WellMet that we ever had. And these guys are definitely doing some serious damage to the other teams in the European scene right now. The first map between the two teams here is going to be Sky Temple. And once again, we have SK going for a composition that is not really played all that often right now. We have them with Arthurs as their single tank and even Fawcett being played here on the match. Of course, they have been in the European scene for a long time, a very stable team, but well met is extremely strong right now. So we're gonna find out on Sky Temple who's gonna take the lead in the best of three series here at the ESL Major League. All right, everybody, welcome to game number one here on Sky Temple in our first best of three series today at the ESL Major League Season 2. We have uh, SK Gaming going up against WellMet, and to the left side of the map in blue, it is SK Gaming with Aragi on Arthurs. We have Zamoni on Taranda, Von Till on Uther, Snitch on Illidan, and Bakery on Falstad. To the right side of the map, it is their opponent once again with the double healer composition. Sok on Diablo, Hazops on Jaina, Shadowma on Vala, Savold on Brightwing, and Sport Billy on Mel. Furian. This is the ESL Major League. I'm Caldo with Miss Kilaris, and we're going to bring you the coverage of Game Number One of the Best of Three series. Already, SK going to move up towards the Watchtower, and already as well on the other side for Well Met. Interesting talent choices. This a siphoning arrow build. I think it was them that ran it on when or uh, Tuesday as well, right? So. It's something that they have been using quite a lot, and uh, the one thing that's really interesting when you talk about well met these days is that they are oftentimes playing a very sustainable build. They really love their double healer, and they also like to go into the siphoning arrow on Vala, which just mm. makes the hero even more tanky. And with that, they had great results, especially against Illidan Combs. They were doing extremely well. It's so tough to kill one of these heroes, even the squishies like Vala and Jaina. It's yeah. very, very tricky to take them down. And they had very, very good results with compositions like that. So I'm not really surprised to see that again here on Sky Temple. Well, they were already laying in way up towards the top. They didn't get the opportunity to jump on Seville at all, as he was able to scout them out in that bush. So Zarmany and Aragi just going to sit around here and couple up with that tri lane up against him. But a nice Howling Blast into the Lunar Flower already takes one down, so pretty quick kill. Yeah, very well done. And we have, at this time, Arthurs and also Tyrande up at the top lane. They're not roaming. Originally, when I saw the draft, I really expected them to just try and mm. rotate between the lanes. They're starting to do that now a bit, but it's a pretty cool thing. It kind of replaced what we had a few months back, where Muradin together with Tyrande was a thing, but Muradin not really being played all that often anymore. And now Aragi here with Arthurs has another chance to go for Howling Blast into Luna Flare and Hunter's Mark, which is also quite strong, especially if you have Bakery behind you with the added damage. And it looks like now SK will just take the middle temple. Top one will be taken by Well Met. I'm trying to look over the other talents here uh, with Frost Presence being taken up for Arthas at level one. Lingering Chill uh, picking up here for Jaina. So there's been a way more experimentation as well with Jaina's builds uh, since she really rose to prominence. A lot of the times you would see the extra or increased uh, slow momentum from 25% to 35% at level one, but now even Arcane Intellect being taken, so you get a lot of extra mana back. Uh, it's really cool to see how the Jaina builds have been kind of diverse over the past week or two. Yeah, it's kind of nice, but at this point, actually what established itself on Jaina, except for a few games, you normally see on level 1 and on level 7 the talents taken for the trade. So Lingering, Chill and Frostbitten should be the level 7 talent here. With the level 4, there's quite a few choices that players are going for. Oh, nice attack against the wall. They're getting, oh wow, that wow. last second heal with the healing ward, but no, it's not enough. He goes down. And we have the second kill now against Brightwing. But as I was saying, like on level 4, that's where most of the builds start to deviate because in this case we have Arcane Intellect. Oftentimes you see even Envenom taken on her. Yeah. But the talents... I, I, we have a couple of exceptions, but normally it's really just the two talent traits on 1 and 7 that Jaina gets here. Yeah. I've been experimenting myself with Arcane Intellect and, uh, you know, the amount of mana that you actually do get back gives you so much extra sustain in lanes. Mm. I think it trumps in a longer game the Envenom, unless you're going for a comp that's like really, really aggressive. And right now, you know, their comp is a pretty normal, stable comp. 
Depends, of course, also a lot on the maps. If you happen yeah. to play in Haunted Mines, then in Venom <laughs> is kind of the way to go for it because we all know that the first mine is extremely important and a strong level 4 just goes a long way there. Right now we have the level 7 talents coming to play for SK. As you can see, for Arthur's it's kind of the standard build these days with uh, the Howling Blast cooldown. We have Destruction on level 4 and then Rune Tap. Rune Tap is still a talent that hasn't changed for Arthur's since he first came into play, which is pretty incredible. I feel that Blizzard is probably going to work on Arthur's again in the near future and is going to try and just like experiment with the level 7 talents here in particular. When you look at Uther on the other hand, it's Cleanse. We have one mule picked up on the side of Taranda in this game. So only SK Gaming can uh, yeah, repair structures, which can be very... Oh, actually, sorry, my bad. We have a mule also on Malfurion. Mm -hmm. I didn't catch that. Both of the teams, therefore, going for mule, which makes a lot of sense since the objectives here attack the structures directly and you always want to be able to repair them. The gust of healing being picked up as well, which will give them a little bit of extra burst healing, which is exactly what they want if uh, people like Snitch are actually going to try and jump on top of you with the damage they're going to put out. But at the same time, would really need Falstad here as well to get the damage out uh, against that little bit of extra healing that we're seeing now from Wellmet. As they take themselves that bottom temple, and they will get themselves a little bit of experience from the tower kills, which they do need. They need to catch up here. Yeah, they are currently nearly a level behind, and SK is already starting to move in another attempt to drop Sock, but the Howling Blast and the Stun of Tyranna not really synced up completely. They tried to isolate Uther here, the healer already being attacked, but Aranagi and the rest of the SK team is moving in right now. Sport Beale is about to go down on Malfurion, and Zamoni um, just barely hit by Von Till, but SK is getting low, but they get the kills in. Uh, quite a few more kills going down on Wellmet. Yeah, there you go. Four end up falling. Zocker left alone, and... Very difficult for him to get out, so he's going to try and take Venafil with him, uh, but it's not going to be successful, so a very, very nice steal. That will give them level 10 so early in comparison to well met. Very, very strong game by SK so far, and in that temple fight, they were really able to keep a lot of the heroes alive that should have died by any means. I mean, as well met did a decent job keeping their own heroes alive, trying to focus the SK players, but then so many of them got away with just barely a few hit points left, and of course, in the end, well met got completely wiped here. Great fight for SK, 7 kills against 1 at this point, and this earlier level 10 is just amazing for them. They have Army of the Dead now on Arthurs, we're having Starfall, Divine Shield, Metamorphosis, and the Hinterland Blast chosen. And coming back to that talk that we had about Jaina earlier, Frostbitten was taken as the level 7 talent, so still pursuing that build. And it's yeah. usually the first 7 talents where most of the builds for nearly all of the heroes are kind of the same, and the deviation from, uh, like, a lot of them comes in at level 13 and 16. Great kill against Vala, by the way, here by Snitch. Illidan really, really playing his strengths right now. Oh, wow, I missed that one. Sorry about that. But you are completely right about Frost, especially Frostbitten as a level 7 talent. It's amazing for Jaina, the extra damage you're able to get out of that. But look at the way they're actually just willing to trade here. They're going to take down the fort up towards the top, lose themselves a few of these buildings. They know that they couldn't fight up in a straight engagement. So I think that the trade, despite them actually losing quite a bit in mid, was okay for a well met. Yeah, it could have definitely been worse. The one thing that I really like about well Matt's style, or which I always like oh. find interesting, is that they pick up all of the heal talents for their heroes. With two healers, you would oftentimes suspect that they would go for Silence on Malfurion, mm. or maybe even the Emerald Wind on Brightwing, but they go for Blink Heal and for Tranquility. And we have indeed, in this case, we've yeah. been talking about this in the draft, we have Lightning Breath chosen. It's so interesting. I guess with Malfuri in there and the potential of actually picking up people with roots. So, in my mind, later on, Tenacious Roots absolutely has to be the talent choice oh, yeah. here for Malfuri. Of course, it has come into the meta quite a lot nowadays, and it is there a lot. But there goes Lightning Breath. Everyone moves out of range of it uh, quite quickly and doesn't take too much damage to it. Morphosis is going to come in. Snitch moves back, pops his first aid as well, keeping him alive. But he's still in that Metamorphosis, so he could do more damage. Yeah, and Lightning Breath in this case was nearly useless. I mean, it's nice to zone your opponent out and mm. force them back. But as you already said, uh, we've been talking about this during the draft. If you have Malfurion, oh, oh ho, ho, ho. wow, he got completely <laughs> blown to pieces by Bakery's Hinterland Blast yeah. there. But yeah, he's very key to that combination. Oftentimes you have a setup with either Maw or Void Prison being used and then the uh, Entangling Roots comes into play. Of course, uh, Tenacious Roots on 16 is a must. And mm -hmm. then Lightning Breath can do quite some work, especially when Diablo hits level 20. But I still feel like during that time in the mid-game up to level 20, Diablo is struggling yeah. to get a proper Lightning Breath in. And let's just be honest here, Sky Temple, not really the map where you expect a 30-minute game.
Yeah, and you're not going to have those like super narrow choke points as well, where everyone's going to be lining up as well and potentially retreating out of that. The temples are generally quite open spaces, so you're going to have to be spinning around as slow <laughs> as he does for a while. <laughs> Bakery taken out here by Shadow Mar. That was actually a very, very nice kill. Bakery moving into the corner and then using the barrel roll to get towards the keep uh, the fort, but in this case, Vala was already there and went straight for it. And now with that kill, we're having, uh, well, Matt trying to go for the boss here. It doesn't really look like SK matters, like it doesn't matter too much to SK too much apparently. They don't even move in. They just wait at the top, start to rotate now. They've seen that early on thanks to a bird of Zamoni, but they actually arrive. No, they don't arrive in time to take this. Yeah, a bit difficult for them to do much about that, especially with the false start actually going down and now respawning. Going to have to move back up to the top towards the temple, keep things going. 13 talents have come in, an overflowing light for that extra little bit of heal, so now there's going to be a whole lot more sustainability on the side of SK Gaming. Yeah, and you know, with all the heroes that we have at the side of well met, they usually are pretty good at locking down Illidan, I want to say. They have the Polymorph, they have Tenacious Root. Um, it would be a. I think if they had a gone for another choice of tanks, that might have been even a bit better for them. But in this case, right now, we're having with Diablo, of course, at least the opportunity to stun Illidan for a short time. As long as they can somehow isolate him and drop him, that would be nice. But so far, Snitch has been doing an exceptionally good oh. job. Pressured, especially the back line. Yeah, our Ragi has to be careful there. Yeah. <laughs> Gets away in the last second. And by the way, he has still not picked his level 13 talent. Yeah, very, very curious as to really what he wants to go for here. I don't play too much Arthur, so I can't quite recall everything that's on that level 13, but that's a good Howling Blast to start off this engagement, but he's got to be careful. He might take quite a bit of damage. The sustain is there, though. They will keep him alive. Uh, well, they're trying to back off from this. Yeah, and Illidan is jumping in already. Here comes the Lightning Breath, and that's one of those situations where you might move back, but the Divine Shield already be used to keep Illidan alive. He's going straight for Hazobs here. Needs to be careful. The Healers are lacking behind a bit. Zamoni is on the way. The Tenacious Root, on the other hand, locking down one till for a second. Jane drops regardless they can't keep her alive not even with two healers and now snitch is trying to catch Vala but Shadowmar is already escaping to the safety of the gate. As much as I'm not the biggest fan of lightning breath either uh, at this point in time that was a really nice move of well met to move back towards that open space funnel the rest of SK gaming through and try and get guaranteed damage on it and you could see that two players were zoned out for a little while but it just wasn't enough uh, to keep them off it so good use of the tools that they had available to them in the space that they had available to them but didn't do the business yeah they they try but right now as you already said like it's pretty tricky for him for them yeah. to find the proper setup and also just like the the area in the game where they can force a fight and really get the most value out of the talent so for Diablo that's always tricky with Apocalypse even if you don't hit it you at least force your opponent to reposition mm, and to yeah. react they don't really get that in those fights. We have Arthur's now going for the spell shield. Makes a lot of sense to go for spell shield here in my opinion since you have with Jaina a lot of burst damage available to the opponent. If you can negate some of that, that's always great, especially if you are the sole tank of your team. And now we're going to have to be a little bit careful in mid. Hasu as well as some of more of the members of Wellmet will come in around there. So Snitch and Zarmany pull back whilst they were also cleaning up to the top left here or SK Gaming. But just one temple now. They still technically have that level lead here to SK Gaming. And 16 is going to hit very soon. So an extra talent comes in uh, to help them out. Benediction obviously being picked up. Some big, big talents there at 16. Yeah, Benediction is great. The stone skin on Arthur's is amazing for him in this current state of the game. With the army of the dead now suddenly he becomes very very tanky the blood for blood on Illidan is a great talent he doesn't really have to solely rely on his healers to stay alive he finally has something that he can use to get some hit points back and of course the entire combination that we are seeing for here like false that is just boosted once again by that overdrive talent that he can pick up here yeah, uh, Overdrive Hinterlands Blast is one of the sexiest things in this game. It's pretty fantastic to watch someone just blow up uh, when it goes into those kind of team fights. But now they've completely controlled that shrine for a long time. Nothing that they could have really done against that. Trying elsewhere to get experience where they can with Brightwing going for that split push. Uh, but at the same time, they are under threat now. Brightwing may have to come back to try and defend this keep. Yeah, he will have to. We have on Vala, by the way, an interesting build that we've seen several times in the past few weeks where you try to go for more or less a hybrid build. You go for the arrow build, and if you don't really want to go for the full arrow build, you decide to go for Frost Shot on level 13 usually. It gives you a bit more control in those fights and allows you to keep especially Illidan of your skin. So that's quite important to take that talent mm. at times, but it's very dependent on your opponent's team composition if you really need to go for it or not. 
Oh, they're trying to hunt down Brightwing there for a second, but don't find the mark. And you're totally right about Frosher. I mean, for me, the mul in the multi-shot build, aside from the range at level 1, which, yeah, it's it's pretty darn good, the Frost Shot is the, one of the most valuable components of that multi-shot build. So if you can squeeze it in to other builds, uh, then absolutely. 40% slow on pretty much every single target on your opponent's team, if they're not careful, uh, is a fantastic tool. Yeah, it's it's a great talent to have, especially if you have several heroes in your opponent's lineup that are trying to chase you down, and if you can get, create just that tiny bit of space yeah. between yourself and them, and that is worth a whole lot, especially if there's also an Uther on the opponent's team that is always trying to get close to you for the stun, then this talent goes a long way. On 16, we have, of course, the uh, the tumble taken now. We are also seeing Northern Exposure for Jaina. Critterize taken on uh, Brightwing. Oh, they're trying to go for Aragi! Oh, and he drops using his talents, but he's not fast enough here. The Lightning Breath keeping everybody else away. It was once again a very nice positional move here by Well Met. And now they're suddenly in a 5 versus 4 situation. They're trying to close the distance in experience by taking another target down. They're going for one till and they're going to get Uther. Ah, very, very good. Now they're going to have to all back off. The boss having respawned recently means that that will be a free, easy pickup for them. And there's the potential that they could control even both shrines with this. As long, uh, they're going to have to be dealing with boss as well at the same time. So SK trying to make the most of it, rotating up towards that top shrine, getting a few shots off before anything happens. Yeah, SK was at 10 to 2 kills before this happened, but right now all of the camps are taken by well met. And the big issue in general is that you can be, like, you can be in head the entire game, if you don't kill keeps, it, it's absolutely worthless mm. because at some point your opponent is going to hit 20 and you will hit 22. Then there's no new talent that comes into play. And the stat advantage that you gain is also quite ne negligible. So at this point, it's all about dropping keeps. And right now it's actually well met that starts to really put the pressure on the keeps at the bottom lane. Yeah. So SK, even though they are still a bit ahead in experience, they need to be super careful here because this can turn extremely fast. Yeah, uh, it's uh, been a great turn for them so far here for Well Met. Double shrine, a uh, double temple being controlled. This bottom t uh, t uh, keep taking a lot of damage. The boss now finally gets cleaned up. But because they were cleaning that up the whole time, they couldn't rival any temples, even if they were uh, the five there whilst that was going on. So the two deaths really did cost them. Tumble on the Valor means that you can have extra arrows, keeping herself alive even whilst all the extra damage is coming in. Yep. So it's a cool little build. I've been playing it with it myself uh, recently. Obviously, you know, a lot of people played the multi-shot build, a lot of people played the auto-attack build, but not necessarily this one. And I messed around with it, and it's, it's a fun little build to play. It's very, very different from the, the other yeah. builds since you have to make sure, like, it, you get the most damage if you go really into a one versus one with another target. So positioning is everything. If you start to attack opponents that are mm -hmm. close to a creep wave, you don't get anything out of it. So it's really important that you pick your battles and uh, much more positional than the other builds. Multi shot, of course, is quite easy to play as well because of the extra range. It's a very safe build. Oh, yeah. our Ragi again alone oh. on the map, and that's not really a good start for SK. Here comes the Divine Shield in the last second, and they need to disengage right now. There comes the move against Snitch, but the heal is there. Well done by Zamoni and Von Till, keeping those alive. And SK is going for the battle and engages. Snitch is in the thick of things with that Metamorphosis. Here comes that hit to one blast, though. It does quite a lot of damage. Jaina ends up falling pretty quickly. Araki's going to go down on the side of SK Gaming. And Snitch now really wanted to do a little bit more damage, but didn't quite want to dedicate towards the extra four. So the back off from both teams, one for one, still not bad. Yeah, and Shadow Ma is going for Bakery right now, and he's not alone, so Vault Whoa. is there, the Vault forward. There's Von Till, and they're trying to snipe him down. SK is losing a lot of the momentum that they've built up earlier, and they are now behind in experience, and the Temples are activating just in time for Well Met to drop another keep. One is already down, and they could take down another one here. The early game went to SK, maybe they got a bit complacent here, but at this point, Well Met surpassed them, and this double healer comp is yeah. proving to be very very difficult for SK to handle. And it's going to be interesting once level 20 hits because we're going to have that level 20 talent on uh, on Diablo and I'm assuming it will be the extra buff to the the, the breath and then there wasn't tenacious root actually yep. taken. So this will be quite interesting to see how they use it. Obviously it's going to hit. <laughs> it's a very very big cone if he actually does take that over bolt but uh, very, very powerful. I'm very surprised that we have um, Hardened Focus taking over Tenacious yeah. Root. The last time that I saw this comp attempted, it was Tenacious Root and it really worked uh, so well. So Vault at the top is ah. trying to save himself with a quick ice block, but that obviously doesn't work out for him. 
Yeah, the keeps are still alive, the two of them. Didn't get another one there. Soccer is waiting for the talent. Didn't take it just yet. Could go for the Hellstorm here. Has the option to go for a Blink as well. Whoa. And, oh, at this point in time, we're having Snitch moving in. But he needs to be extremely careful. He dives a bit too fine, in my opinion. And here comes now that talent. Soccer did still not pick up the 20. Very surprised to see that. Sport Billy is about to go down. Snitch, uh-oh, gets away here. And suddenly, well, Med is in trouble, losing their second healer now, too. Yeah, good turn around. There was the potential that Snitch actually could have fallen quite easily during all of that. And Storm Shield is going to be picked up here. So uh, a little bit of, not indecision, just a little bit of contemplation on what he wanted to take at that level 20. Uh, and picking up Storm Shield is going to give them a little bit more sustainability, but it makes me feel as if they think that this game's going to go on for quite a bit longer. Uh, obviously, though, now with these temples being taken and the potential of three temples, I think it's three temples next, um, then it's going to be a lot of damage. Yeah. And from soccer, let's face it, that was a bit of a misplay there. Picking that 20 talent this late after mm. the fight didn't really help. If he goes for Storm Shield or for Hellstorm, it doesn't really matter. Whatever talent he picks, it's going to be a huge asset to the team. In this battle those 20 talents are powerful and that might have decided to well they could have maybe yeah. kept no fury in life they could have maybe gotten a counter kill depending on what they what he would have went for but not picking the talent at all during the fight i don't think that was a good decision yeah it could have helped you are right um but now they've got to look forward to seeing how they can really work around this both teams have lost one keep uh with mid being destroyed by uh, for well met and bottom being destroyed for them. The boss is going to be the next point of contention, as Zocker has been happily walking forwards and does see all of this. And how well are they going to be able to do this? Shadow Man actually drops so fast! Oh my god! Those talents on 20 that we have for SK are great. Nexus Blade's chosen it and he's jumping in once again. They're trying to go for Sokka at the same time. The rebound comes into play from Taranda. Sokka is getting low on his Diablo. is getting dropped already. He'll be back in just another few seconds. But of course that boss is now wide open and they can go straight for it. Divine Shield is not even in cooldown. Redemption on Montil is still available. And here comes Illidan jumping in again. It's Hazops. Those Nexus Blades oh. helping out. And just look at that, the ice block saving Azobs, but for how long? Uh, not for very long. It's like Hinterland Blast had anything to say about it, and yes, it does, as Bakery will get one more hit off there. It was an overdrive, Hinterland's Blast as well, so big damage coming out. Perfect timing on the Lunar Flare once that ice block finishes there on Malfurion. And despite three ice blocks being on the side here of Well Met, they have not been able to survive in these end fights. And now they're looking to just go for core. Yeah, they want to go for the core. They don't even bother with those temples. They want to end the game. So Vault already in a bit of trouble here. They're going straight for it. And there are only th two heroes alive to stop them. Yeah, the Lightning Breath, of course, is once again uh, being a bit of a nuisance. But they won't be able to save that core. At least I don't think so. Three heroes alive right now. And Vala is starting straight in 40% on the core but all of the heroes still alive this has to be game and this is it game number one here on sky temple ends in favor of SK a nice back and forth game here to start the best of three series off at the ESL major league but at the end of the day it's SK with the victory on map number one and SK takes it they win game number one take the lead in the series here great match of them on sky temple very very well played here and then, of course, now with Well Met, well, we have already talked about them having a bit of a newer lineup. They are very strong, but maybe still a bit inexperienced playing together and they just need more practice. But they still have, of course, a chance to win this series. They need to win it now on the next map, which is Cursed Hollow. And Well Met decided to bring out an old friend of ours. We have Sergeant Hammer in the game again. She's been absent for quite some time since the last patch hit. We want to see heroes like Jaina and Sylvanas being played these days. But with Sergeant Hammer and Cursed Hollow, Well Met is trying to make a comeback. So let's jump into game number two and find out if they can make that happen. Game number two, ladies and gentlemen, this time on Cursed Hollow, it is SK going up against Well Met once again. And currently we have SK in the lead with the 1-0 after they were able to take down their opponent on Sky Temple. It was a close match that we saw there though. Now to the left side of the map, we have once again SK Gaming with our Ragi, this time on Diablo. Zamoni on Taranda. Vontil is playing Malfurion here as Snitch plays Vala and Bakery Silvanas. 
to the right side of the map. It is well met with Haas Ops on Sergeant Hammer. Five, Shadowmar playing four, Jaina this time. Three, We're having Sport Billy on Uther, one, Sok on ETC and Sir Vault on Zagara. Very nice compositions here for both of the team as you can already see. We have the Diablo and the Tyranda roaming squad for SK Gaming on the side of well met. We have a lot of pushing potential with Zagara and Sergeant Hammer and I guess let's see who's going to take this early game because especially well met is going to try to take down these structures of the opponent as fast as they can. That would have been the funniest thing ever if they all four stood in that bush for a little while and then eventually as someone came close they're like huh creep is emanating from that bush I guess I won't go near there then <laughs> uh, but yeah they decide to back off from that. Yeah, and well, the one thing that we can already see on level 1 is that we have this time the multi-shot build again on uh, Vala. We have for Sylvanas, of course, with the wind take and level 1. We have the standard build for her. There are a couple of changes that you can make, but usually there is a path that you always want to go for with Sylvanas, and that's what we're having here. We see again uh, the trade on Jaina, and Shadowmar, Sport, Beal, and Hazards are pushing the bot lane, and Vorontil is not going to have a fun time there, as up to the top lane we're seeing Sir Vault on his Zagara trying to push back the tri lane of his opponents, and as gay so far didn't really get anything out of that Taranda and Diablo comp. Yeah, uh, aside from clearing up all the creep in the middle between these two lanes, so it will give them a little bit of opportunity later on to try and roam a bit easier after cleaning all that up, expending a little bit of mana, but it's so valuable when you plug up against the Zagara, so there's a potential that you could get some kills later. Yeah, and of course what you always try to do with Diablo and Taranda is move in, get the Diablo slam and stun, and mm. then use Taranda for the second stun, burst the target down, that's also where Jaina comes into play, or a hero like Sylvanas in this case for SK Gaming. But the bot lane already lost the first tower against the Sergeant Hammer composition of Well Met, and the second one is about to die as well. The three heroes for SK, they do as much as they can to the top lane, but they cannot outpush this tri lane of Well Met, it's just too much. Yeah, definitely, with Sylvanas there it does cause a bit of an issue um, up to the top eventually, uh, but catching up against like someone like a Zagara, obviously with a little bit extra pushback uh, in that lane compared to a M uh, Malfuria, and it's it's night and day. It's interesting to see that Will Met started to rotate the top lane to relieve Zagara of all that pressure because the problem that they had with this still is that through the rotation during the time that they switched lanes from the bottom to the top they couldn't do any damage at the top lane and now the end result is that we have both teams taking down one wall. If Will Met would have just continued the push at the bot lane they would have probably forced the reaction out of SK or dropped the fort but in this case because two of the heroes didn't do anything mm. for like 15 seconds suddenly they are on exactly eye level. Yeah, I, I wonder if the forcing at the bottom could have actually uh, done the same as it did up to the top and kept, you know, everything going up to the top anyway and just been fine. Uh, so there is the, uh, the argument for that if they'd have continued to apply their pressure down to the bottom. I think that's a very good analysis of the situation, but well, for now, here comes that first tribute uh, and well met are already well underway uh, trying to claim this, but there is a lot of counter resistance coming along with Zagara still staying at top actually. Yeah, and here comes that flip from Araragi moving in. It's a four versus four and Zagara is going to have a fun time up at the top. Well met is not going to try and take that tribute. The only thing that they are going to try here is delay it for as long as they can, but they give it up at this point. Zagara is pushing the top and well, we all know what happens when you leave a Zagara alone for too long. That lane will be gone if they don't hurry. They need to rotate some on top and that's Sylvanas in that case but one of those towers should fall. Yeah a little bit of a shame there by Savolt. He didn't soak a, a shot before the Hydralisk was there so he only got half of the duration out of the Hydralisk before the, the wave came in that he could have redirected the shots there on the tower but that's by the by still did quite a bit of damage. Here comes Aragi onto that easy camp down towards the bottom looking to do some damage to Shadowmire and Belly. Tyrande's gonna end up falling Paying the price though, SK really overstepping and going into enemy territory. Yeah, they were trying to just make sure that that Siege Giant camp would not end up in the hands of Well Met, but they overextended, as you already said, Clarice, so that was a bit tricky. The mm. top lane still pressured, and the thing is that we have so much creep now spread by Savold that he's going to be easily able to press down another tower, especially since he already depleted it of his ammunition. And we see him go for Rabbit Incubation, not for that extra talent with Endless Creep that we see yeah. a lot these days to grant vision for the heroes. Bakery needs to be super careful, especially since he already used the Haunting Wave, so he has no escape mechanism left to him. Yeah, you're not gonna have a really fun time against uh, Zagara 1v1, that's for sure, up to the top. And now they're gonna try and put on some pressure down here towards the bottom. Aragi um, actually misses the grab and Luna Flare combination onto Hasuobs, who manages to die out of there with his hammer. And I'm surprised we didn't see Endless Creep come down. I think it's a really, really good map for it, but 
you can't really argue too much against Rapid Incubation, giving you so much presence in lane over and over. Oh, but there's the combination, and Shadow Man manages to get out again. Yeah, but Aragi will not escape here. He gets dropped, and, well, Snitch is trying to kill Hazorps, but he's also a bit too late. Oh, Shadow Man needs to be very careful. There comes the last mm -hmm. second attempt to heal him out, oh. but, yep, there we go. Both of them dead, and, yeah, they overstell their welcome here. Well, Matt was in a great position, but now they're starting to lose the fight. Thankfully for them, we have at the top oh. lane still Zagara pushing, but Sport Billy is going to drop two on his Uther. Sokka the only survivor here, but they still have Zagara, and Zagara is starting to drop the hit points on the fort at the top lane. I'm really surprised that it in the end went over to SK Gaming. I thought that Well Met had an easy se uh, first tribute there after that fight ensued, but Seemingly not the case. Now Aragi is looking to get on top of yeah. Zavolt, who doesn't have much mana to really combat this. The problem is that is they, well, Matt simply got too overconfident. They looked mm. at their opponents, they were like, okay, we just we already dropped uh, Diablo, so they have no tank, they are low, and they completely neglected that they didn't really have a lot of hit points either. So they tried to move into that small area, and suddenly we had with Vala and Sylvanas just too much damage. I don't even know if they realized that Sylvanas was rotating, so they might have missed that. And then uh, they got those counter kills. They could have moved back, grabbed some uh, hit points, went for the tribute. They had so many options there, but they really felt like they could drop another target, but there was too much damage on the side of this game. Uh, an interesting creep placement, actually. Uh, despite not taking endless creep, actually two creep tumors per bush uh, up towards the top of that lane. So I really want to ask him about that, actually. I guess it's extra double coverage, and, you know, but. I think you could still kill it with one Lunar Flare or something like that, so... Oh, uh, well. He wasn't really leaving the top lane anyway, so it didn't too much to matter too much, as fort for fort will go down. I find it really interesting in OSK is moving on the map. I like it, to be honest. The Garo is doing so much damage, but at the same time with SK moving down to the bot lane and just having a bit of pressure there, they were able to negate that completely by dropping a fort on their own. There comes Apocalypse now being used. There it is already. Forces a repositioning of the entire team. Wailing Arrow coming to play. We have also, of course, Reign of Vengeance on Vala, which she can use the more. Did not do too much, it just made sure that Vontil couldn't really pursue it here. But this is an interesting game, really. The rotations from a strategical point are very cool. Zagara for a long time, not with the team, but of course now what you try to do is have that more an apocalypse set up. They didn't, uh, well, they can't do that because it's of course on the opponent's team, so, well, yeah. May I just add as well, since Patch, how incredibly talented you have to be to play Uther correctly. Because the amount of buttons that he gets, especially if you take Shrink Ray, <laughs> is ridiculous. It's like, well, okay, I guess I need to throw down my shield, I need to cleanse, I need to actually Shrink Ray this guy, I need to use Benediction so I can get my double Holy Light, and it's like, you just gotta keep pressing buttons, man. There's never ending in these fights. Yeah, it helps if you have a StarCraft background, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, true. Now <laughs> Aragi here getting in position once again. We have no heroic abilities except for Vala's Reign of Vengeance that, he can, that she can use there. Oh, well, Matt is getting into a decent position. Hasorps is just trying to get his damage in. Of course, if, as long as he uses Napalm, he ju can just move in, poke a little bit, and also start dropping the hit points on the side of SK. So that should work quite well for them. Right. And they really want to contest this. Both teams really. SK would love it for that three on the curse. Meanwhile, of course, uh, Well Met really wants to deny that from happening. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of a stalemate, drawing the line between this. Uh, Shadow Mare pokes forward just a little bit, starts working on it, and <laughs> has to pull away instantly. There's no I... way he wants to go against Aragi. Yeah, Snitch is trying to take down the mines, and I like that. Oh, oh, there comes the dodge. Shadow Mare is still alive. Apocalypse is being used. The Maw is there as well. And in comes ETC with a stage dive attempt. Aragi is ah. very low. Sylvanas already dead. And Tyranda too. Well, Matt is moving away. They are all very low, but they got two kills and this should be an easy tribute for them now. Beautiful Maw, beautiful Maw. At the same time though, I don't think Aragi needed to try and charge in there and go for that kill. They could have played that out patiently, I feel. Uh, but as I said, the, the Maw really capitalized on that kind of impatience, I would say, from SK Gaming there. So well done by them. Yeah, they get the kill against Malfurion, and at the same time, Aragi is starting to move back again since he's pursued by nearly an entire well met team here. They got the tribute, so it's two for two now, and Aragi is starting to fall once again. He needs to be careful. He was slowed down for a long time, and Sokka, he really wants him, and he gets him. And will they get anything more from this? Bakery's going to take some damage. I can understand from Diablo's point of view wanting to go in there and get a kill because he took Devil's Dew, because he can get back into the fight really quickly. But if the entire team, well, especially if the Lunar Flare doesn't hit and you don't get your kill on Shadow Mare, then 
Well, it's going to be really sad from there, so they're going to try and have to find things elsewhere. At least they don't get cursed themselves, though, right? Yeah, they don't get cursed, but they are level behind, and I mean, there's a 13 talent now on the side of well Matt going for the boss is very, very ballsy, and I mean, that is very optimistic, and of course, it is being spotted here. Uber Rockstar is there, first Hunter Killer talent, we have Sprint, and that was not the smartest decision that SK made today. High risk, high reward, and it didn't pay off, at least not yet. A yeah. 13 talent is missing for them, and here comes the fight, and this could be a bad one for SK. Yeah. Divine Shield was used on Zocker to keep him alive, though. I don't think any of the heroics were used on the other side of things, though, on SK. So no. there is the potential that they could do something here, with Divine Shield actually not being there. As the, uh, the jump will come in, and Polarfill will fall very, very quickly at the back of this. Yeah, and Aragi's dead as well. Oh Everybody dear. dies. Oh. It's a complete team wipe. You never want to fight a fight like this. Not 13 talent against no. 10. It's just too much. It looks like it's not a big deal, but it's the stat advantage that you have. It's the repositioning. We saw Shadowmare moving away with his Jaina, just like going to the left side, saving himself thanks to the sprint. Trink Ray came into play too, and now suddenly it's a team wipe, we have a two level lead, a boss has been taken, the tribute appears at the same time on the map, they're gonna be cursed, it's that momentum wave that Wilmet is riding now, and I mean, SK, it was a very, very risky move, and they paid the price. Yeah, the, the past two or three minutes for them really does scream out to me that kind of impatience of like oh well we, you know something happened i guess we got to try and take boss or something happened oh i guess uh it's it's a bit of a mess a little bit of a mess i really i'm gonna ask them after uh exactly what was going on in this kind of section of the game at the moment because it is an interesting one but hasu's just paused for now as we're having lag issues and this is uh so far the story of our european major league yeah, I mean, Jadoma just like dropped out of the game, but he's back now, so that shouldn't be an issue. They're like, just going to make sure that he can really like play and doesn't have any problems here. Mm -hmm. But now, as we can see at the bot lane, there's the boss already. He's going to try and move in. Snitch is already in position. He's trying to protect that fort, but the fort is already dropping. We can see that at the experience indicator. All the way up to the top, we're seeing, well, Matt, they're going to try to take boss number two right now, which is going to be great for them because they have pressure at the top lane then as well. In the mid lane, there's Aragi and Vontil. They cannot really try and contest with that curse. They have to protect the lanes. And we have so many camps on the map now that if Will Met wants to, they can just go from Bruiser camp to Siege Giant camp, can go to the left side, steal them away from their opponents as well. And that is going to be pretty easy here for them to just like take the camps, keep the pressure up, yeah. and really just like try to stay ahead and always keep that momentum going in their favor. Yeah, once you get one boss after a swing like that, then you almost guarantee yourself a second boss, uh, and then ugh, all hell breaks loose from that point on. It's very difficult. They've just killed that keep off down towards the bottom uh, as well here. Shadowmare is looking to reconnect, and apparently Vonethil has gone to the oven, so... I guess he needs his chips. <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure what exactly that meant. If he <laughs> is going for his pizza, uh, <laughs> no clue. Like, he should have somebody there that does that for them. Maybe his mom, <laughs> his little brother, or his girlfriend. Like, take your pick. But in this case, we're having now 13, by the way, still half a level away for SK. It's the experience lead. And also, think about level 16, how fast it's going to be there for Well Met. Yeah. This is going to be very, very tricky right now. Um, we have in the mid lane at this point, Von Till and Araragi, uh, I, there's nobody who can really go to contest that boss. They have an owl already on the way, so they will see that Wilmet is moving mm. there. But, I mean, yes, knowing is half the battle, <laughs> the problem is <laughs> you, you can't fight there. It's 14 kills against two, and this is not, not going to be possible. Yeah, very, very difficult. Very difficult. Even if it wasn't for that level advantage, having that boss down to the bottom that you've got to clean up that's still on full health is going to be very, very annoying to deal with. So, yeah. <laughs> and Von Flip Till is flipping that? his chicken. <laughs> Thanks, Von <Phil>. I <laughs> Well, I love it. I love it. This is so silly. It's great. Uh, this is amazing. What if he hadn't have had the pause? What would he have done? <laughs> I don't know, then it's just extra crispy, I suppose. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> well, we're having the five-man move into the mid, so they decide against taking the mercenaries, at least for now. They are going to just capitalize on the curse. That boss has already been defeated, at least the one at the bot lane, but they still have to deal with the one at the top lane, and uh -huh. the curse is still going to go strong for another 15 seconds. So as long as they keep the pressure up, it's going to be fine. 
Yeah, this is a great little opportunity here for Wellmet to really pull themselves back into this series, doing a lot of damage in mid, getting themselves towers. The boss now, full health, going to get a ton of towers. And how are they supposed to stop this keep from going down in mid? This is, you know, they, I, I was about to say it when they were taking this boss. They are going to get level 16 whilst this boss is on a rampage. And here it is now with Executioner Benediction, Stone Skin, Extra Brood Expansion, and finally, normally, the Cold Embrace coming in for Shadow Mare. So, pretty brutal stuff at the moment. Yeah, I mean, for Shadow Mare, we have Northern Exposure. Sylvana's playing oh, on, the, yeah, yeah. on the other team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. They Come have on. to wait a little bit long until they get level 16. But then, with Cold Embrace, they could actually burst targets. The problem is right now, well, Matt is doing the bursting. And they have nearly a three-level lead again against their opponents. It's cool to see, by the way, execution on the side of Sergeant Hammer. It makes just so much sense to go for the talent if you're mm. running with a Jane on your team. Oh, definitely. Yeah, the Giant Killer Executioner has been quite common uh, on Hammer as of late when they're just using it as that proper right-click machine. And, I mean, why on earth not? Hammer is a fantastic right-click machine. Uh, so now they're going to have to rotate round towards the northern uh, lane and see what they can do against that. But well met is on an absolute tear at the moment. Yeah, especially since Blizzard nerfed those mines, the bullhead mines, just a while mm. back. You kind of have to go for these talents now anyways. It's a little bit similar to what they did to Stitches. I felt that was a bit of an odd choice to take the mini stun away from Pulverize and kind of force every Stitches player. We don't see him a lot these days, but if you see a Stitches, he goes for the fishing hook, he goes for the sustain build, because the slam build is just not worth it any longer. Yeah, it's like... I mean, of course, at level 16, you could go for Hover Siege Tank, but when you're with a very coordinated team, ex ex Executioner is just a great choice. Yeah, you'd, hover a Siege Tank is something that's like, oh, am I in danger, am I not? It's kind of the indecision talent, whereas this, it, once you've got a front line, a proper front line that you know is going to be there to support you, I don't think you need it as much. Yeah, you don't, it's not really necessary for you, and you could see that Hazorbs sieging up right now didn't really use siege mode all that much in the yeah. game. Oftentimes, he just tries to just stay in his normal form. I mean, siege mode only gives him a small area of effect damage that usually doesn't do a whole lot. It gives him range more than anything else, but it doesn't actually give him more single target damage, and that's why staying in the normal tank form, oftentimes when you fight for tribute, you need to reposition yourself all the time. It's a great talent to have, yeah. covering siege mode. Might be nice in those situations, but having that extra damage from Executioner is just worth a whole lot more. Yeah. And then when those talents stack up with, uh, well, before he hits level 20, before he reveals his true form, which is Nexus Frenzy, uh, which is a whole lot of damage, it just <laughs> synergizes so, so well. His true form, does he get spiky yellow hair? I, I wish he would. I Over 9,000 carries. Over yeah, he 9,000. Needs, <laughs> he needs to kind of level up very, very cell-like and make sure uh, he's going to be able to do a huge amount of damage. It's very, very scary at that point. Yeah, and they rotate towards the bottom lane now, uh, with him closing in on that Super Saiyan form. We have 20, only one and a half levels away, and with them already starting to drop the keep at the bot lane here. It's wow. very likely they're going to reach that fairly soon. ETC went for some split push experience at the same time, and I mean, SK is just getting pummeled to the ground right now. But they have the 16 talent, and that helps with an imposing presence on our Ragi. Suddenly it's going to be very difficult to take down Diablo. And double blood for blood, no cold embrace. They're going for the drop here. Ah, oh, but Diablo is already dead. Even the counter kill against Sir Bolt is not helping them since Snitch is probably going to pay with his life for this one. Yeah, despite himself getting the kill, it's like you got yourself in a good position to get the kill, but did you think about this position to retreat on out? And sadly, not too easy at all, as uh, unfortunately Valor will end up going down for them. Aragi's actually gone in pretty far, though, uh, to try and pursue on forward, and not getting any more kills just yet. Bakery, if he really wanted to pursue with his Howling Wave, he could, but I don't think it's worth it. He would end up dying, I think. Yeah, the lanes are just pushing in so hard for Well Met now yeah. that even with that small victory that uh, Skay got there, it's tricky for them to really get those tributes in and get the map control bad. That tribute should end up in their hands. That would be the curse against uh, Well Met, and that would really help a whole lot. But are they really going to get it? It looks like it. Yeah, Shadow Mao should be a bit too late for that. And there is the also the lockdown to make sure that they're not going to be able to push on any further. So Curse is up, and for now, Well Met is out. They are not going to be taking any more engagements, just going back to the hard camp and keeping themselves okay there. But now bosses are up, and this is where I think it's probably just going to be a one-for-one -one trade. Yeah, it could be, but that would also be level 20 then for uh, Well mm. Met. So I, this is the best way for SK to come back if they are able to wipe them during a boss. Yeah, rival it. It's still the same talent. 
No, so far we don't have 20. Right now it's the same talent, so Wellmet needs to be careful. If they lose control of the game, <coughs> it's gonna be now. Yeah, I I gave SK the benefit of the doubt and I thought they were gonna play a bit more passively, but it looks like they're not. They're gonna try and rival it. I think it's good analysis by you uh, before that level 20 hits to try and yeah. do this. I don't, think they, I don't think they can play passive. If they go boss for boss, then Wellmet is just gonna push with their own boss. Mm. They will have level 20 and they are gonna go for core. There yeah. are no keeps yet. So SK has to make sure that there is no boss for Wellmet, but Wellmet will just play it passive until they hit 20 and then try to go for it. Well. And they are gaining a little bit of experience here, though. Are well met as they did move up slightly towards the top and get themselves a few uh, creep kills. Even Zocker down towards the bottom is grabbing some as well. So they're going to push up towards the top keep uh, fort here, even and get that. But level 20 is here now, and all the talents are going to come in. Zocker is going to force the issue straight away with the stage dive on in, and the more actually catches a whole lot of them. Yeah, Harden Shield is there. Saval gets healed in the last second, and here comes the Nexus Frenzy. Down goes Diablo with another 50 seconds, and this should actually be game. The blink by Jaina, very aggressive, moves in with the Bolt of the Storm to get another Blizzard in. We have the rest of the team just trying to chase them down, especially Soccer could go for a power slide. I mean, what are you supposed to do? Hasu out of siege form, close up to his opponent there, and Vonithil was hitting for almost 500 damage. And it's just, what are you supposed to do against that now with level 20 against level 17? So, very, very difficult for them to stop this wave of Wellmet right now. SK was dying a slow and painful death at this point, mm. and Wellmet is now trying to play that extremely safe with them moving up to the top and capturing the boss. Again, though, the one problem that you sometimes run into, you dominate an opponent, you do really, really well. I mean, we have 19 kills against four. That's already quite the statement. Yeah. But oftentimes, you try to play it a bit too safe. Your opponent reaches 20, and then you suddenly fight those fights on eye level again. We but we already have a lot of damage done by Wellmet since they were able to drop two keeps, so that helps. I don't think that SK can fight right now. I'm not quite sure what that is. That looks like a bit of a suicide squad. Moving in with four heroes against five, 18 mm. versus 20, that's a fight that you will never win. It's a tricky one. Maybe it, they think, well, I mean, Vodafil's just going to end up falling. He goes into ice spots to try and save himself during all of this, but he will die pretty rapidly once he comes out of that. Uh, and now everyone else is on the retreat. Yeah. Now, maybe they wanted to do damage to the boss as it was being picked up because they thought they would rotate round to the other boss, but they were there ready and waiting. I think the thought process was, guys, we lost this game anyways. Let's just try for a Hail Mary. And if maybe. we can kill them somehow, if somebody gets rooted by the boss while they still do it, we might be able to win that fight by like an incredible miracle and then can, we can turn it around. But if we allow the boss, it's game over anyways. So we have nothing to lose here. They lost uh, two heroes and now they're going to lose this game. I mean, that's the conclusion, of course. We are going to see a third map between Wellmet and SK Gaming here at the ESL Major League after Wellmet just took game number two here on Cursed Hollow. Wellmet ties the series up and we have a last and final map in the best of three. It is going to be Dragonshire, and SK was looking at the last game and they were probably thinking, hey guys, listen up, on Sky Templar our composition worked extremely well, let's just play that again. Let's bring in Arthurs once more and make sure that we get our heroes in here, let's play with Illidan, and that's exactly what they do. A very, very similar lineup, they switched out Falstad for Sylvanas, but that's already about it, and they are trying to win the best of three now, against Wilmet, who came back into that series with a victory on Curse Temple, but now, on the last map, we're gonna find out who takes that best of three three victory in the ESL Major League. Dragonshire is the third map in the series, ladies and gentlemen, here at our best of three in the ESL Major League in Season 2. SK Gaming is going up against Well Met. The series is tied and this map is going to decide the victor of the best of three. To the left side we have SK Gaming again with our Aragi on Arthurs, Zimoni on Taranda, Snitch with Illidan once again as Bakery plays Sylvanas and That's Rave amazing. is going for amazing. Uther. Uh, to the right side of the map, we are seeing Soccer on ETC, Sport Billy on Rega for Well Met, Hazops is playing Jaina once again, Shadowma with Vala and Brightwing played by Sirvault. Alright, so fun note Rave is still, it is Kumato boss, yeah. but I don't know who uh, Vonefil was before. I wonder if it's just Kumato boss again, he just has multiple accounts and he just messes around, but. I, I don't know. So maybe it was just sub before and uh, Kimata Boss couldn't actually play before. But yeah, just to make sure everyone knows out there, Rave is Kimata Boss. 
Yeah, so at this point we have at the bottom lane, you, like traditionally on this map you have either a tri lane at the bot lane or you have that four man rotation between mid and bottom to uh, every eight seconds that happens to take down the creeps and that's exactly what this case is currently doing. So they rotate with four heroes to the bot lane, they go up to the mid lane again and they just catch every single experience point by eliminating those creep waves as fast as they can. The advantage is that you can, with the roaming, pick off stray heroes that you find on the map but it's also a bit predictable, of course, to a certain extent. The focus on the bot lane happens because you have access to two Siege Giant camps and one Bruiser camp. A uh, cool little use here as well by Spot Billy, uh, using his totem for granting vision whilst he they know that they are doing this kind of tactic. So of course, as much as they do know that they are having this little four-man roam up, down, up, down going on, just having the heads up there of the totem in the bush, making sure that they know exactly when they're coming along is very, very useful information here. Yeah, in terms of the talents, I mean, well, of course, as you already mentioned, vision is extremely important in this kind of setup, and especially with the bushes that we have there. The talents, once again, a bit of a deviation from what we've seen Araragi play on Arthur's in the first game, we're having him on Regeneration Master as the level 1 talent right now. Uther is, by the way, going for block here. So if Uther with a block talent, not with the uh, um, Conjurer's Pursuit. Oh, and there comes Shadowmar. They're actually trying to get a target here, but Shadowmar needs to be super careful. He gets locked down, vaults away. There's also the totem and the kill against Uther, block or no block. The healer of SK Gaming is already gone. That totem was an absolute hero completely itself. Just over slow down uh, him as he tried to get out of there. And Bakery now going to have to try and dive out. But totem again slows down, uh, but he will be able to get out. That hate against Sylvanas. Yeah. <laughs> they really wanted that kill. But that was a nice defense that we saw on the side of SK. Of course, that stun on Taran that really helped. Zamoni is under a bit of pressure. But the aggression from Will Met, I really like it that they show that in these early stages of the game. We're having again the arrow build chosen for Vala. And we also have, in this case at least, on the side of Illidan and Sylvanas, the standard builds that are being applied, the same also for Taranda here. It's really Uther's build with the block that I find personally quite interesting. Yeah, I wasn't really expecting block, gotta say. I wasn't expecting block at all, so I guess he's looking to be a bit more active in these fights. I wonder if later on that influences him to go for something like Divine Storm, but Divine Shield is so valuable on someone like an Illidan, so it kind of discredits that argument. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we have both of the Shines now suddenly under the control of SK Gaming with the mid lane. Bakery has the mobility but cannot really push against Soccer too much. He's pressuring in the two towers already. The first one was already taken out, the second one is being attacked right now. That passive on Jaina is of course amazing for that, going straight forward at this point. The bot lane heavily contested as Kumar to boss aka Rave is forcing Sport Billy back. In experience, SK also a bit ahead, but I really like these rotations for both of the teams just now. Yep. As the double shrine now in favor here of Well Met, SK Gaming have done a pretty good job of establishing control on the middle, getting those towers down. It makes it a little bit more dangerous for Well Met to step out towards there. And Zomini now is going to try and contest this shrine, whilst it won't be uh, captured in the middle thanks to Baker's presence there. Yeah, the top lane, Shadowmar, is using his arrow build. Arrow build is getting more and more popular these days again, and Vala is probably one of the best examples of Blizzard really making these talents work over items, since yeah, we have yeah. on Vala right now three builds that are played in competitive play. The arrow build, the right-click build, and multi-shot build, which is still quite popular, even though the uh, battle momentum talent was taken away from uh, Vala. I cried a few silent tears when that happened, but <laughs> she is still, she's still pretty strong. I, yeah. st I still love her. Yeah, she's brilliant uh, for that versatility exactly that you're mentioning. I mean, I'm trying to think if you could have any more builds for Valor right now, and I, I don't think so. I think these three really cover all the very important bases uh, for people's preferences, so it's really cool to see that for Valor. Yeah, and now with the level 7 talent for both of the teams, we're having the, oh, I love it, the adjustment, unstable poison used on uh, Sylvanas, and this is a cool mm. talent. I have been playing with this a lot, actually. It's in my opinion, not necessarily as strong as going for follow through if you are talking about damage against heroes. Yeah. But it's so fun to play with the talent. The pushing ability that you get is crazy. Your siege damage on Sylvanas goes through the roof with the talent. It's insane. What basically happens is if you attack a target and drop it, it explodes and does damage to the uh, creeps around it. And that is just so amazing to drop a wave later on, especially. 
Now they attack. Oh, uh, Sylvana's actually getting killed uh. here as well as Rega is being dropped first. Oh, and the kill against Taranda as well. Well, Matt is jumping in. Good face melt and Uther, he dies too. Uh, that was really unfortunate for Bakery as he howling uh, waved the exact wrong way out into the clutches of Hasu Obs on his Jaina. So he basically howling waved into a blizzard, which did cause a bit more damage than he was expecting on the other end. Um, and then that yeah. did escalate, obviously, towards those extra kills. That horning wave, like, so often... Uh, I play Sylvanas a ton, and oftentimes yeah. I end up trying to take down a wave real quick, and suddenly I get ganked. So I already have the horning wave, uh, the horning wave on the way, but uh -huh. in my head it doesn't really register, because it's still an escape skill that I'm trying to use, and I completely forget that I just used it to try and do damage. So I press it again and try to go uh -oh. somewhere else on the map and jump into my opponent, because of it that happened like three times a day to me and I always felt oh. silly but it's it's very very yeah, like it happens quite often right now soccer killed in the mid lane and this is SK's revenge right now they find a target on the map who was trying to get the Dragon Knight but SK was ready with a rotation and took him out yeah they, they paid for it pretty well like he paid for that denial with his death of course but I mean, at least they got the denial on the Dragon Knight, and they did end up denying that shrine to the top. So level 10 talents come in for both teams. Uh, not really seeing too much of any strangeness on the side here of Well Met. Likewise, on the side of SK Gaming as well, not too much strangeness. Divine Shield has been picked up, so I'm still interested by the block choice here by Kimata Boss or Rave, whatever we want to call him. Yeah, Strafe, by the way, being used by Shadowmar just now, trying to get the damage in, and Illidan, oh, they heal with the Ancestral Healing, very well done, but we have, of course, Bakery moving in with that trade on Sylvanas, trying to make sure that that fort is not going to slow anybody down, but here comes Sokka jumping in with the stage dives, a Moni in trouble, and he is being dropped once again, that Tyranda dead. I was slowed down, they were slowed down so much, even outside of the range of the fort, by the stage dive, so, I mean, <laughs> That was really, really unfortunate there for them. They're gonna lose even more people, and unfortunately for SK in game number two, the kills are just not going their way. Well met is getting great fights. That double healer comp again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've been talking about it. I'm notorious for underestimating those, and this happens again. Look at that the damage from Bakery in the lane, though. Like, his siege damage Jeez. is going to explode over the course of this game. He's already at 41,000 and there for leading the charts. Even more than, uh, yeah, than Arthur's, who's always at the front line and, of course, has his slow aura here. Okay. So Bakery, if he goes on a lane, f f apart from the rest of the team, he can really push these lanes down pretty fast. But, in t in, uh, like, in general, of course, the game is not really going well for SK. They are half a level behind, but that boss, or that Dragonite, could do a whole lot of damage and drop more than only the fort. Yep, he's already doing all right. Gets half of that fort's health and will back off for now. Wow, the Howling Blast actually hit the Dragonite there on the very, very edge, on the cusp of uh, his hitbox, but for now, they will just back off. Dragonite's going to stick up here whilst the entire team of Well Met, aside from Shadow Mare, looks to be rotating and going elsewhere, maybe to push bot. So it's just denial and uh, stall out tactics at the top while they look for damage elsewhere. Yeah, and right now we're having Illidan. Illidan is trying to pursue Sokka in the mid lane. We have that pressure with four men now being met by Aragi, Zamoni, and Rafe, aka Kumato Boss. Bakery is starting to move in to the bot lane, and is going to be easily able to push that back on his Sylvanas. We have, of course, for him now, Wailing Arrow taken up. Army of the Dead for Arthur is going to uh, make it a bit easier for him to keep him alive in those fights. And just look how, how fast Bakery, with that Haunting Wave and his passive, and also, of course, that Arrow can really take down a, way, like a lane of his opponent, oh, yeah, or just yeah. one of those waves. It's just a second, and it's gone. Yeah, just evaporates. Once you kill one minion, it starts that chain reaction yeah. and everything pops. Uh, especially if you've already thrown your Shadow Dagger on everything, of course. That's the most important part of it, really, uh, to try and have everything chain up. So, well, for now, I'm looking to try and contest bottom. There was already that easy camp pushing on forwards, doing quite a bit of damage to those towers already. Uh, and Raven's army have no real way of actually denying that with everyone else rotating up towards top and not really getting much done, so I think that was a little bit of a misrotation there by SK. Yeah, there's four heroes down here, and they do damage, and they have a 13 talent as well, which once again puts Frost Arrows into the uh, yeah into the hands of um, Bala, who has that hybrid build that we've been talking mm. about. 
it's extremely strong to have that. And here comes Sylvanas with that counter push, pu making sure that this entire wave just evaporates once again, takes on the mercenaries as well. But this is a very tricky spot now for SK to be in. They have the 13 talent, they're not too far behind, one level, but still, they need to be super careful of how they pursue this. They need a couple of kills. Yeah, definitely need those kills, so you're right. They want to catch up a little bit, get some towers even somewhere would be nice to try and equalize things up. Because at the same time, Zoka is not going to stop split pushing. And also, not only do they have stage dive, but they also have bright wing as yep. well. So they can soak both lanes and then just get to the fight whenever they want. So um, SK needs to establish some kind of consistency here going up against this comp. SK kind of has to do damage now. They have yeah, to do yeah. something. But the problem for them is, as you already mentioned, that the two heroes that are going for the split push can just jump into the fight at any point in the game. So SK has to be willing to fight and has to attack. The only other option for them is to really rotate on the map, split their army up and make sure that they have one hero in each lane to mm. soak the experience there. But no matter what the decision is, they have to make one because this is getting very, very scary. It's so funny. I mean, we breezed breezed over it in the last season. Uh, but for me, ETC with Stage Dive and a Brightwing, it's like a, a mini Vikings in essence. Uh, you can do so much with that experience gain. Uh, but for now... There was a little bit of an engagement, but even the four on three down here with the metamorphosis and jumping wasn't able to do anything. Uh -oh. Here comes the jump though. Yeah, ETC jumps in and Zamoni with the divine shield. He's alive for now. Starfall is already being used, but Zamoni, now that he's out of the shield, is being attacked and dropped instantly. Shadow Mao and Vala is just barely getting away. But Jaina this time is dying, and that means that a lot of the damage that they have at their disposal is suddenly gone. Yeah, uh, now they're just backing off a little bit there. Uh, Shadow Mare just keep on the very edge of this, but he gets healed up almost to full by a chain heal as well as a blink heal from his respective healers, so very, very difficult to contest with that double healer comp still. Yeah, and well, we have the rotation up to the top lane up by our Ragi, trying to make sure that they don't get the second Dragonite. Just on the side note, the siege damage on uh, Sylvanas is by now at 76,000, nearly doubling the second place in the siege damage on the team. So yeah, she is getting very, very scary there. Yeah, definitely very scary. You don't see that very much uh, at the 12 minute mark in the game. Uh, but she will continue to do that though. Uh, whether that is effective damage though, whether they're getting anything done with that, because yeah, you can keep clearing these waves, but are they getting any uh, forts or are they getting any towers off it right now because of the double heal comp, because of the sustainability and the way in which they're able to also push the other two lanes themselves here with well met, it's not, it's not working out as well as they would like it to. No, it's definitely the, that's definitely the truth. You have to be able to just rotate on the map and go for a lane, and they currently don't have a lot of freedom to move. There's no space left. Well, Matt keeps them in very close quarters here and always pressures them, keeps them on the defensive, and that's not really the game that Sylvanas wants mm. to play here. So it is tricky, as you already said. But in this case now, we have 16 versus 16 just now happening, and this is the time when they're really starting to fight once uh -oh. again, a double blood for blood for both of these teams right now. We're having on the side of Arthur's now Frostman feet, so uh, he has that trade on two of his abilities instead of one. And with Benediction on Uther, Kumatobos should be able to keep his mates alive a little bit longer in these fights. Yep, it's all the buttons, man. Gotta spam everything and get going. Keep targeting everyone because it does take quite a little while. As for now, they're still holding out here. ETC is in the middle, can still jump down whenever he wants to, of course, with that stage dive that he has available to him. They were looking to go for the wraparound if uh, SK was actually pushing forward on that bottom lane a little bit harder, but that's not going to be the case. So, at least if they did fall behind drastically and uh -oh. they lost a few keeps, then ooh, those, yeah. What is Snitch doing at the bottom lane? That oh, is sure. called professional suicide. Oh, that oh. arrow! What? That was great! And he's jumping in, but the heal sport Billy with the ancestral healing is safe, at least for now. Soke is jumping into that fight, but SK has to retreat once again. That arrow from Sylvanas was amazing, but Snitch before that diving very, very deep and taking a lot of hits. They're going to keep on going here. Aragi and Snitch at the front. Aragi's going to take quite a bit of damage himself. Has to get out of the front lines. Healed up a little bit there, though. Bike him out of boss. So Snitch is now in the front. But because the heal was on cooldown, Snitch had nothing to keep him up at all. And Rave is going to end up falling as well. But I, 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 I liked how the arrow hit, but if you don't have something to follow up with that silence mm. against a double healer comp, the damage is null and void. It will just get healed up very, very quickly. I was very surprised that Snitch was diving in that deep.
deep. I don't know if he realized how far away the rest of his team was, but when he originally jumped in, he just barely saved himself with the heroic ability with the metamorphosis. And I think he could save that up for a bit longer if that wasn't the case here. Those healers just weren't there in time to help him out, and I don't think he realized that they were this far away. So now two of them are dead. We have ten kills against three, and well met is just once again playing an incredible game here. Yeah. Brilliant game. It's uh, gone very, very well for them. Uh, they keep just taking these fights very well, even when they get hit by some of these heroics. They are not falling under the pressure. The double healer comp is really working out. And, you know, the Kaldor, what better players than people like Hasuops to make these kind of sustain compositions that take forever to kill? Because only Hasuops in StarCraft was one of those guys that you just couldn't kill for like an hour if he wanted to do. He would play the most patient <laughs> games and he's doing the same thing in okay. Heroes. Okay, so what you mean is if Goody starts to play... Oh no, Hero no, 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 no. <laughs> don't even continue that sentence. I don't need to hear it. <laughs> or Avilo. Oh god. Oh, the nightmares. Okay, we're gonna see a new team being formed with Goody and Avilo <laughs> playing on the same lineup. Perfect. Triple that... healer comps. <laughs> Triple quintuple, my friend. <laughs> It'll never end. <laughs> you can't kill them. They can't kill you either, but no, you can't exactly. kill them. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of it. They can't kill you either because they just don't move out. <laughs> <laughs> well, at this point, talking about kills, we have 10 against 3 still. And it's just like, the problem here still is the damage. That's one of the reasons why the talent well, earlier it surprised me a bit on Sylvanas with the unstable poison. If you look at her siege damage, it's insane. 130,000, no question, yeah. it's amazing. But of course, as you already pointed out, what exactly can they do with it? They never have Sylvanas on a lane on her own where she can just like push the lane in. So they are needy, in need of a bit of hero damage. And at hero damage, Sylvanas is still leading the charts yeah. without follow through. With a talent, it would be even better, but they start to lack, or they lack that single target damage a bit, I feel. Yeah. That's oh. nice, they get a kill, and this time, well, the problem is that they are probably going to lose a, f a keep for that. Yeah, yeah, that's so, uh, they're trying to base now, but I mean, even by the time they were base, they would actually probably lose this keep anyway. It is falling quite rapidly uh, off the back of that. Oh, nice, they forced the, they forced the call back. They could get keep for a keep, they have a 5 versus 4 situation, Sylvanas can lock the keep down. That might be yeah. a good move for them. 20 against 19, granted, but still, they get the keep. I well mean, they're the, they're the ones with the damage advantage. As much as you're running a double healer comp, if one of them's dead, it doesn't matter. And even if you are all both alive, you can't heal keeps, uh, unless you've got a mule, of course. They but will have 20 in this fight. Yeah. Could they go core? <laughs> they're trying. They're trying. They're trying. And they're they actually... Whoa, Shadow Bar, Shadow Bar, Shadow Bar! He needs no! to keep life. He cannot die if they want to save this. Uh, Tyrannus going to end up falling. This could have been an overstatement uh, from all of this. It was really, really ambitious move. It could have worked, but if they'd have got Shadow May, it could have definitely worked. But they didn't get him at the very, very end, chasing him all the way back to the well. Yeah, and I think Snitch screwed it up a bit, didn't he? Or Aragi goes on. Did, didn't he have a body block and gave it up because he jumped over Shadow May again? Uh, I'm, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm I'm, I'm I'm like asking myself hey, if he could have body blocked even more and taken down Vala. If I mean, Vala dies in that instant, it was already great from Shadow Mato to just move back and dodge that uh, metamorphosis that came in. Uh, because as you said, if Vala dies, then they could lose the game. I mean, to be fair to them, they did quite a lot of damage, but now they've got to think about the game just ending right now because they lost so many people on the retreat out. Uh, Shadow Mary is actually going to take quite a lot of damage. If they could bring him down, maybe they could stop this from going on. But here comes the strafe. They try and lock him down. There's the stun to uh, avoid it. But there's still a lot of sustain here. For He's well alive. Oh, I like it. This is cool. This, this is, is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. I am loving this. The aggression that we saw from SK there, that was amazing. It I was really beautiful. liked that. That they call to just say, well. guys, screw it, we go for it. And yeah, yet now they are on even levels or even talents with their opponent. Interestingly enough, for both of them, we have nearly the exact same talents. A double bolt of the storm, one uh. rewind, and a hardened shield. The only deviation is redemption against storm shield. Uh, and we all know how redemption works out here for Uther. Just take a little while, of course, to kick in because you have to wait until Uther's ghost decides to go away uh, after he's done throwing out his little flash James. of lights. James, Shadow Watch doesn't die. He, can, yeah, he, he got away dying. again. Oh, oh, oh finally, no. finally. No. no, he just doesn't die. He's always on the run. Snitch, Snitch is getting healed. Snitch might die. Oh, my God. I cannot Shadow believe this. <laughs> and then the ancestral is like half health. Chat. Ancestral healing. Why on earth not? Let's chase. Let's pursue on forwards. And I, I, can they get any more kills off this? I, Zarmany 
Zamani's way out of spot. I thought they were all just going to retreat out, but they continue on. I wow. think they may have got hit by the frost shot there from multi shot as well. Well, Magus did it. Yeah. They have the Dragonite. They move in. This should be core. This should be their game. Wait, After losing the first map in the series, they are going straight for the core right now. There are three heroes dead. This has to be it. Shadow May, he just doesn't die. It's nope. insane. He's the only one who didn't die in this game. Uh, they're trying to get him as well here with Baker trying to do some damage as well. He's going very, this very low. It. And he actually, he dies G to a keep. <laughs> <laughs> he dies in the end. Oh GG and well met takes the series with the 2 1 and wins the best of three here at the ESL Major League. Congratulations. <laughs> Great performance by Wilmet today. They are able to turn the tides of their best of three. They fell behind after the first map and now they won two in a row. Really, really nice matches that they played here. So they take the best of three series against SK Gaming, which puts them into a great position here. And for SK, of course, this is not really the start that they were hoping for into the second season of the ESL Major League. But Wilmet definitely showing that they are very, very strong these days. So a great start into the season. I hope that you guys enjoyed the Best of Three series. If you did, then give the video a thumbs up on YouTube. You know the drill, subscribe to Calder TV. And of course, if you have any questions, feel always free to just leave a comment in the comment section. We're gonna talk about that. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in today. I hope that you had fun. I'm gonna see you next time with more Heroes of the Storm content here on Calder TV.